Hey everybody, it's Cody Fry. Today we're going to do a song breakdown of my cover of The Sound of Silence. I've always loved this Simon and Garfunkel tune written by Paul Simon, one of the true greats, <laughs> obviously. I just think the lyric is such like this sphinx that I want to decode, and I thought I could use the orchestra to kind of decode the lyric in my own way or in my own interpretation. I should add that the tune features my friend Ryan, who goes by the artist named Sleeping At Last. And if you've not heard his music, you should definitely go check it out. He's just a truly amazing artist. So jumping right in, uh, I think if you know me at all, you know that I love Debussy. And so when you're listening to the intro of this tune, which is uh, quite long, uh, too long, some might say, uh, you might hear a bit of Debussy influences from uh, his piece called Nuages. I'm terrible at French. How to pronounce Nuages. Nuage. Nuage. Got it. So I took a lot of inspiration from Debussy's Nuage, <laughs> and I made a little mock-up so you could hear it, and I pulled the score off of the IMSLP database, uh, which, by the way, imslp.org. You can download uh, so many amazing public domain scores to study. It's one of my all-time favorite resources for learning how to orchestrate. I just loved the way that this intro feels. It feels so dark and foreboding, and nuage in French means clouds, so I just feel these clouds like rolling in over the horizon as I hear this instrumentation, which is uh, two clarinets, two bassoons, and then uh, some other woodwinds come in, but you'll just kind of hear this feeling of darkness and foreboding. And you can hear that sort of English horn, da -da -da -da. I kind of use that sort of thing as well. You know, if you're going to steal, steal from the best, uh, and also steal from people who are 200 years old. When I'm making covers like this, I'm trying to find new orchestration techniques, and I love Debussy, I love this piece, and so I just, I wanted to kind of take that feeling and apply it to the sound of silence, which I think has its own sort of foreboding nature about it, Debussy with the assist. So here we are in Logic, and for this piece, I really wrote mainly in Finale, which is a notation software program. So I was writing actual music notes <laughs> instead of MIDI notes. But as I was writing, I was kind of programming in the MIDI instruments so that I could have a sense of how each moment was coming across. I really feel like virtual instruments are this amazing cheat code where you can kind of feel what the orchestra's gonna feel like before you're spending a million dollars in the studio to record them. <laughs> uh, so of course, humans always sound better, but it's so amazing to be able to have these mock-ups and kind of ask yourself in each section, is the orchestration technique I chose for this moment communicating the emotion that I want it to communicate? And I think that's what's so powerful about uh, MIDI instruments. I've actually made some adjustments to what I've been using here. I recently got the Cinematic Studio Strings, which I love. Uh, I'm trying to get used to the latency, but I think I'm really excited about how they sound and just the feel of them. And then the other big one for me are these V-Wins. I love the V-Wins, uh, as well as the sample modeling brass. So I have uh, these libraries and they sound really good, but really they're just so playable. And the difference is that they're not these big sample libraries. They're basically synths that are mixed with a little bit of sampling. And so they're super playable and I don't know what sort of magic they're using to model these instruments, but they sound pretty insane. And they work with my nifty little breath controller. <laughs> and I've just been having so much fun. You'll also notice that well, this is a lot of tracks. It's not as many tracks as it used to be, and that's because I've kind of switched to key switch technique rather than having one track for every articulation of the instrument. I used to hate key switching, but I recently found out that you can use your iPad. I'll see if I can get a close-up for you here of the... It's pretty cool because you can see all of your articulations are up there on the board, and then you just press which one you want, and you're playing that articulation. And the other cool thing is that it's set up to chase tracks. So as I switch tracks, you'll see like there's the Spitfire A6 horns and there's all the articulations. But when I 
it's pressed down to another track. There's the trumpet solo articulations. I, I never liked key switching on the actual keyboard, but I really love it with this iPad setup. To mock up the choir, I sort of combined my voice. I did a couple recordings of myself singing each part and then put in like these choir ah samples. And so you can hear what that sounds like. So here's just me adding in the choir. I'm glad that we went and recorded it for real, but you know, for a mock-up, it's pretty good. We recorded the choir at Ocean Way in Nashville with an unbelievable group of vocalists. I think it was 22 vocalists, I think. Also, this piano made the record. This is, it's a software piano. It's called the Simcock Felt Piano. And uh, I've used it on a lot of my music. You probably recognize the sound. Uh, but yeah, it's, that's the piano that I used for the track. And I'll play you kind of a full portion of the mock-up here so you can kind of get a sense of, I don't know how my mock-ups sound, I guess. Here you go. So it sounds good, you get a sense of it, but it's definitely not humans. Uh, so as you've heard me say before, probably on previous videos, everything always makes it into Pro Tools. So this is what that looks like. It doesn't look like very many tracks right now, but that's because all these folders are closed. So like, here's the real choir, which was, I don't know, six or seven passes. This is all just choir. <laughs> uh, and then the real orchestra is down here. There are the strings. There are the winds and then we did a couple overdub passes. All of the percussion came from the Logic file. We didn't record percussion for this, I just played it all with my keyboard. And, oh, the harp is up here. We recorded real harp along with the orchestra. So yeah, this is really basically just real orchestra and real choir and then fake percussion. There's like a couple little support things here. Like I always export my MIDI contrabasses because I've found that sometimes really the only way to get enough bass for me and my ears is to have the MIDI basses mixed in with the real basses. And then there's a couple other things that I use to support like the strings here, the shorts. Just kind of helps with that pocket there in those little staccato sections. Here's the score. This is what this piece looks like in my brain. You'll see here we start with uh, the clarinets and the bassoons, just like the WC reference, but I put the alto flute on the main guitar line from the original recording. Do -de -do -de -do -de -do -de -do. It begins in alto flute and then uh, transitions to harp later on, which is a great stand-in for guitar in the orchestra. So let's hear that. Here's the top. There's that English horn thing like the WC. So this is sort of a transition section. You have the marimba playing the main riff along with the harp and octaves. Big flute runs. Sharp five, my favorite thing.
of sirens. Flutes play the end of the refrain. And this is really the intro of the song. You have the harp playing the guitar line. Hello, darkness, and then we descend friend. into darkness. So one thing I wanted to point out is when we go to sort of that A flat chord over here, that is the melody and the visions that were planted in my brain. I tried to pull as much of the like melodic and motivic content from the original Sound of Silence and kind of make them into this sort of symphonic poem that you'll hear. The real breakthrough for me when I was coming up with this arrangement was when I kind of discovered that Aeolian minor texture using the main riff. So the main riff from the original is that. Hello, darkness, my old friend, right? I found that when you use the Aeolian harmonic device, it kind of gives it this weird kind of like creepy X-Files, <laughs> I don't know, sci-fi horror sort of feeling that. It's because you're going from that stable to the tritone. And it gives it just like a weird, creepy, unsettling quality, which I think really works with the song and the lyric because the lyric is pretty heartbreaking and also kind of like terrifying <laughs> when you step back and think about it. Uh, so that was kind of the real breakthrough for me is when I kind of discovered that little harmonic device and I wanted to carry that through the rest of the song. And you'll see down here, this is, hello darkness, my old friend. We really do kind of descend into darkness, the cellos and the contrabasses do this glissando down and kind of crescendo in and we got kind of arrive at that that five chord, the D chord there. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because your vision is creeping. Left its seeds while I was sleeping And the vision that was planted in my brain Still remains Within the sound of silence and The French horns take over the riff One thing on that verse is I like the line where It goes a vision softly creeping and then the basses and the cellos do that do 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 it kind of gives it that like creeping undertone with the bass movement there because a vision softly creeping left its seeds i should jump in and say that the orchestra was recorded live in budapest uh which was really cool <laughs> i was not there i just like zoomed in remotely from uh, over there in that chair. All right, let's keep on going to verse two. The lyric that's coming is talking about restless dreams. And so to kind of set that up, I have these sort of agitated strings that uh, kind of preempt Ryan's lyric. In restless dreams I walk it's kind of really frenetic and it does kind of just feel like tossing and turning like you're having a nightmare or something. At least that's what I was going for. <laughs> And then he's talking about walking alone. And so I thought this would be a good time to kind of bring in some sort of motor. And when I think of walking, I think of marching. And so that's why we get this marching snare drum and the string staccato stuff that comes in and kind of gives you that sense of motion of walking. And so that's where we are starting this second verse. In restless dreams I walked Streets of cobblestone Neath the halo of a street lamp Ryan sounds so good. I turn my collar to the cold and damp When my eyes were stared By the flash of a neon light That split the night 
Okay, yeah. So we get that sort of my eyes were stabbed and the brass kind of does a little effect there. And then the flash is punctuated by a percussion instrument called the thunder sheet, which sort of becomes the musical representation of the flash, which then reappears later in the final verse. After the transition uh, into the third verse, you kind of get these harmon mute trumpets that lay on top of the lower brass. I like the way that they blend. And you'll see that more people are now playing that sort of staccato ostinato thing, the dun 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 um, and I kind of really pulled inspiration from Gustav Holst's Mars, you know, da 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 dun 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 And I wanted, you know, by the big moment of this verse to have lots of people kind of punctuating that ostinato to kind of give it that planets, Mars, Gustav Holst feel. This verse also has what I think is the saddest lyric in the whole song, which is people writing songs that voices never share. I just think that lyric is absolutely heartbreaking. And so I kind of wanted to really feel the angst and the sadness in that moment. And touch the sound of silence. Do, 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 do. Pulling the melodic motif from the verse. And it wins. Make it light a song. There's the harmony of the trumpet. Thousand people, maybe more. Here comes the bigger ostinato. solo up the winds there. I think it's a really cool moment. Yeah, they sound pretty good. And then after that big kind of presentation of the verse, we kind of come way back down and this is where the piano enters and I think it really gives this sort of intimate introspective like interior quality to this next verse which I think kind of helped nail home the lyric to me. This is also the verse with the cancer effect <laughs> that uh, I like because the lyric is silence like a cancer grows and then I have the strings sort of just mute their strings and just kind of play these bow tremolos and this is what that sounds like. It's a pretty gross effect. On the lyric, but my words like silent raindrops fell, I have these sort of flute, blum, 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 like kind of raindrops falling. And also actually, I put a rain stick in the score, but I had never recorded it. So it's not in the recorded version. It's It will be performed live when I play it with orchestra, but there's no rain stick. And it's a little too literal anyway. Oh, and then last thing on this verse, there's this really lovely violin solo that comes in. A silence. That I you do not know. Silence like a cancer grows. Hear my words that I might teach you. Take my arms that I might reach you. But my words like silent raindrops fall and echo. Another sort of obvious musical effect we have here is the echo in the wells, which is literally echoed. So it begins with just me and then Ryan echoes it and then the choir kind of echoes. And I thought it'd be cool to kind of solo up the choir there for you so you can hear how great they sound. I don't really know how I came up with the modulation here. I think I was just kind of messing around on the keyboard one day and I liked how if you follow that Aeolian thing, it becomes the third of an A flat chord. 
I don't know, I just kind of liked the idea that it would modulate a tritone, which is as far away in key as you could get, because we're in E minor, right? And then, you know, we're moving to B flat minor. <laughs> so it's like a really unrelated key center, but I think, I don't know, for some reason, it was really unexpected, and I think it really throws this final verse into this new space that is really epic. We end up back in E minor, but this time we're using this kind of Dorian feel there with a A major. It's this moment here. I'm honestly trying to get into my head about why I thought that was a good idea. <laughs> It just sounded really cinematic to me to kind of land in these unexpected places. I think it's nice to have these moments like kind of in a new key center after being in E minor for so long. Thunder sheet again. Tenement halls and whispers in the sound. They whispered in the sound. Yeah, I wanted that kind of last thing to feel like this, like build up of just like crazy emotion, like you just want to scream, but you can't. I feel like I should have released this song on Halloween or something. And then we kind of end with that creepy piano harp presentation of the Aeolian harmonic technique that we introduced the earlier silence. in the tune. Little pizzicato. I think the hardest thing about doing covers like this is that the originals are just so good. <laughs> It's hard to decide like, okay, if I'm gonna put my own spin on this, where are the moments that I can do that without ruining it? Some of you are probably like, bro, you did ruin it. I don't know, I really liked the way that this lyric responded to kind of the text painting orchestral technique that I love to use, which is to kind of look at the lyric and say, what does that lyric sound like as orchestration? And so this was just so, so fun to make. It took a long time. I probably worked on this for three months not every day, but you know, I would work a little bit on it each week and kind of, I did a lot of revisions. And so it was a really long process to put this piece together. Probably spent too much time on it, but you know, just because I want to, we can just solo up the orchestra and listen to that last verse because I think it's pretty masterfully played. That's why I do this stuff, that sound. Anyway, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, this was so much fun to make. I hope you enjoyed listening to it, all six minutes of it. <laughs> I don't know, if you made it this far in the video, congratulations, we would probably be friends. <laughs> I appreciate you watching and listening, and obviously you can find this song wherever 
you stream or consume music. And you should also watch the score video, which is me flipping the score and kind of these little pop-up cards appearing, which gives some orchestration insight to what I was thinking when I made this thing. I had fun. Hope you had fun. See you next time.